Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously, Bai was accepted as a disciple to become an immortal. In the immortal realm, Bai would discover that his chosen walk is able to double the power of anything he puts in it. However, he loses some lifespan when he does. Later, Bai disguises himself as Yi Zhang to infiltrate the Bloodstream Sector, and eventually becomes one of the four Blood Masters there. Bai discovers that a war is beginning to mount between the Bloodstream and Spiritstream Sectors. After five years of being away, Bai finally returns to the Spirit Stream sector with the hopes of finding a way to stop the war. The story continues as several spectators are amazed to see that the legendary Marshal Bai has arrived, as he is set to go into battle with the next batch of disciples. Several of them point out how they were saved by him at the Fallen Sword Abyss and beg him to allow them to join him in battle. Bai accepts and instructs them to follow his lead. Just then, the transport array for the fourth batch is activated and everyone marvels at the amazing display. It is said that if one's cultivation is inadequate, their body won't be able to withstand the transport. Tianyu points out that none of them should be afraid, and that the spirit stream sector has no cowards. Spectators point out how someone with extremely high cultivation like Bai doesn't have to worry about it, but those at lower levels must first focus on surviving the transport before even thinking of entering battle. Bai assures Mei that she will be fine and reminds her that he is there for her. The transport begins and everyone in the array is taken to their destination. We then watch as the other transport arrays are activated as well, and all disciples eventually arrive to the battlefield. Bai finds Mei to show that she is just fine, but the other disciples point out how just going through the transport is so uncomfortable. They wonder if they will even be able to fight in the war, but Bai heals them and reminds them that they need to believe in themselves more. He goes on to point out how this discomfort they feel is nothing compared to the havoc he used to create when refining elixirs. Furthermore, he has seen how much they have grown in strength, and he assures them that they have far surpassed the other sector's disciples. They are all inspired by his speech and state how much they believe in Bai. Bai, however, thinks about how he would rather them believe in themselves. Mei realizes how much effort Bai is putting in to prepare everyone for war, and decides to help out. She explains that the rest of them are limited by their low cultivation, but they should still do everything they can and fight to the death. Doing so will allow them to protect their home while Bai focuses on defeating the demon Yi Zhang. Mei's speech does just as she intended, but Tianyu arrives to proclaim that he will actually be the one to take down Yi Zhang. Elder Zhou arrives to explain that as the fourth batch of disciples, they will be assigned to various positions to prepare for battle. Tianyu is assigned to be the core leader of one of the three arrays, and Xinqi is as well. Surprisingly though, Bai won't be participating as the leader of one of the outer arrays. Instead, he has been ordered by the sector leader to manage the core region of the Great Array of Path Cultivation Mountain. This is quite the task, but Bai is told that he is the only one capable of doing so since he has the Heavenly Path Foundation establishment. Bai is ordered to go with the Elder, and Mei thinks about how the gap in strength between them is no longer something she can cross by just summoning all of her courage. Bai realizes that he will be leaving Mei alone and turns to give her some advice, but she stops him. She points out how he must no longer look back since he has such a daunting task to accomplish, and explains that he cannot be distracted by worries. Mei promises to take care of herself, and Bai assures her that he believes in her just as the two say their farewell. Bai leaves Tidan under her care, and she reiterates how everyone will protect the sector together. Elsewhere, Li is reminded that the Path Cultivation Mountain's Great Array is the core of the entire sector's defense, and it is far from the front lines. Nearby, Bai approaches and surprisingly sees that the northern and southern bank systems are being combined together. He is also amazed when they pass a giant stone war puppet outfitted with high quality spirit stones. Elder Zoe explains that no matter how many secrets their spirit stream sector has, this war will reveal them all. They arrive at their destination where Zoe explains that every array of Path Cultivation Mountain is arranged according to the system of three components on the inner side and eight divinatory trigrams on the outer side. Bai realizes that this simply means that there are three main positions, and Zoe reveals that that means Bai is the only one that can lead this array all by himself. On this lone mountain top, there is an array within an array, and the future of the spirit stream sector is in Bai's hands. Bai is then left to do this immense task, and he activates the array. Back in the Bloodstream Sector, we see that the leaders of all the peaks are making their own preparations for war, and the Bloodmasters of all the peaks show off their power. Aboard a warship, Patriarch Sun points out that since Yi Zhang has left, the middle peak lacks a Bloodmaster, and since they are down such a powerful individual, their chances of victory have gone down. Furthermore, among the younger generation, only his adopted son Yi Zhang has the ability to fight against the Spirit Stream Sector's Bai. 
He explains that he can only rely on Jun now, but she expresses confidence that Yi Zhang will return in time. They continue to make their approach to the battlefield and release their death puppets in preparation. Back on the mountain, Bai points out how the array is extremely powerful, but it consumes far too much spiritual energy, and if the elders weren't constantly supplying him with energy, it would be very difficult to maintain it. Bai makes one final push at forming the array, and Tianyu is shocked to see that Bai has actually succeeded. The array spreads over the entire sector, and everyone else is equally amazed by Bai's accomplishment. The sector leaders point out how the power of the array should be able to contend with powers at the core formation level. This array usually requires three foundation establishment cultivators as leaders, but Bai has amazingly just arrived and was able to directly activate array embodiment. Just then, the ninth mountain of the spirit stream reveals itself, and everyone greets the first generation patriarch, Timu. He reveals that the entire bloodstream sector has already moved out for war. He warns that there will be many deaths during the war, and even he may fall in battle. However, this war will determine the fortune of the spirit stream sector for the next thousand years. Timu demands that this war must show the entire cultivation world that even if the spirit stream sector must die fighting, they will never live in humiliation. Final preparations for war are then made as Bai puts the finishing touches on the array. Just then, Bai notices a strange fluctuation in spiritual energy nearby, and uses his eyes of the law to inspect it. He discovers that a collapsing blast array has been set up beneath the mountains, and once activated, the entire mountain range along with the entire clan will be destroyed. Bai now realizes that this was the sacrifice that Yuan spoke of, the sacrifice that everyone in the entire clan will have to make. Bai is in disbelief to realize that all his friends in the sector that he shared many joys and hardships with will all perish together. Just then, Bai senses the Bloodstream Sector's aura approaching. Since he is also the Bloodstream Sector's living ancestor, he is also able to determine that all the other Bloodmasters are on board battleships, and even sees June there. Bai points out that if the battle really does happen, then many people will die, and he wishes they hadn't come. On board the ships, the Patriarch activates an array and brings out several of their weapons they plan to use in battle. This includes dead puppets and the Guardians Bai helped summon earlier. The Patriarch is amazed to see that the Spirit Stream Sector still has their integrity, as they have chosen to fight to their deaths. The Spirit Stream Sector is prepared as well, as Yuan states that the people who die in this battle will all be heroic spirits who will never be forgotten by the Spirit Stream Sector. His message to the Bloodstream Sector is that even if they win the battle, the pain they will suffer will be bone deep, engraved in their memory, and will never be removed. Yuan demands that the Bloodstream come so that they can show the power and resolve of their sector. If they want to defeat the Spirit Stream Sector, then they will have to pay an incomparably heavy price. With those words, Yuan summons a gigantic cauldron and by a shock to see that the Spirit Stream's heirloom has been summoned as well. It is the Heavenly Horn Sword that was amazingly spirit refined 10 times. The Black Dragon appears on the battlefield as well and seems to have some type of history with one of the Guardians from the Bloodstream Sector. With all preparations set, Patriarch Song initiates the battle as the Spirit Stream Sector defends against their attack. The attack is immensely powerful as we see that the Black Dragon wastes no time as it instantly unleashes an attack of its own. The Spirit Stream's giant stone puppets are the next to step up as they toss several boulders at their enemy. Blood Rippers are the Bloodstream Sector's counter to them though, and despite the efforts of the Spirit Stream Disciples, they successfully take down some defenses. Just then, Legacy Echelon members arrive to stop the Blood Rippers from breaking through, and Lee asks that Bai protect himself. The Blood Rippers' assault on the array is stopped as they are pushed back, but the Rippers then offer themselves as a sacrifice to the Blood Sword. Bai determines that if they can just continue defending, then the Bloodstream Sector won't be able to sustain this attack for very long, and perhaps there is still a chance to avoid the war. Bai puts even more effort into strengthening their array, which keeps the Blood Sword from breaking the barrier, but it puts a heavy strain on his body. Just then, everyone is stunned to see that the Bloodstream Sector's unchanging bone has appeared from the sky, and pushes the Blood Sword further. It is met by a sword from the Spirit Stream, but it is then explained that the outer array is starting to destabilize. Bai senses that something bad is about to happen, but understands that he cannot leave the main array as it is the most important defense the Spirit Stream has. Just then, everyone is devastated as they can only watch as a breach is made in the array by the unchanging bone. This breach allows the Bloodstream's devastating attack to begin to seep in, as several warships are destroyed. 
disciples fight to the bitter end and Yuan commands everyone to defend the breach. They attempt to do just that, but are shocked when the unchanging bone is making the breach larger. Bai is disheartened to see that the mountain peak being guarded by Tian Yu has been destroyed, and wonders why they must go this far. He wonders why they must kill each other and states that they are all people he cares about, people he cherishes. If the fight continues, there won't be a way to reverse what has already happened. Bai determines that he cannot wait any longer and must do something in this very moment to stop the war. On the front lines, the unchanging bone continues to make its push, but is still barely being held back by the legacy Echelon members. It is in this moment that everyone is shocked to see Bai step in between everything. Bai remembers the drop of blood he used when he helped summon the unchanging bone, and uses it to command that it back off. Bai takes off outside the barrier, and Lee worriedly follows after him. Bai thinks about how he used to cultivate just for the sake of having a long life, but now he only wishes for everyone to live. Bai unleashes a blinding light as onlookers point out how it's the energy of the heavenly path. No one understands what he is trying to do, but Bai makes it clear when he demands that everyone stop and ask to be heard. Song watches and makes it clear that this is just an easy opportunity for him to finally eliminate Bai. Jun thinks the same and commands everyone to behead Bai. As they approach him, Bai reiterates that they must back down, but Song questions what makes him think that he can just order them around. Lee fears for his disciples' life, but Bai confidently reveals to everyone that he can order them around because he is actually the blood master of the Middle Peak. Bai demonstrates this easily as he destroys all the blood swords in their attack with very little effort. Song is shocked to see that the spirit streams Bai use blood ancestral reversion, and every single person in the bloodstream sector is speechless. Still dumbfounded, bloodstream members can clearly see that the person before them is the spirit streams Bai, but realize that the blood key pouring from his body does have the aura of the bloodstream sector. Bai emerges from the cloud to further shock everyone as we see that he has put his disguise back on, and everyone is in disbelief to see Yi Zhang once again. Bloodstream sector members still struggle to understand what is happening, but Yi Zhang doesn't care. He only wonders why now that they have seen him, why are they not paying their respect? They all act instantly and kneel before him to greet their great blood master of the middle peak, Yi Zhang. Everyone on both sides are frozen as they can't believe what they are seeing before their eyes, and Jun wonders if it is actually Yi Zhang or Bai she is looking at. Yi Zhang finally reveals to everyone that he is actually both. Jun finally begins to realize what has happened and now believes that their every interaction was just fake. Bai explains that he had no choice but to hide his identity, and loudly tells everyone that he is the spirit stream sector's Bai, but also the blood master of the middle peak Yi Zhang. The kindness shown by both sectors has been engraved in his heart, so he refuses to turn his back on either sector. For this reason, he asks that they not fight anymore and explains that war isn't the only way to solve their problems. He knows that the two sectors just need to be able to trust each other, and Bai offers to become the link between the two of them. Patriarch Song is furious to see what is happening, as he believes the shameless spirit stream sector is holding Yi Zhang captive. This doesn't seem to be going as Bai had planned, as Li asks that Bai return while the bloodstream disciples are ordered to rescue their blood master Yi Zhang. Li tries to order Bai back to the sector, but Patriarch Song attacks him in an attempt to retrieve his adopted son. Li is no match for the Patriarch, so Yuan arrives to be the one to fight him. The war then quickly becomes a fight amongst Patriarchs, as Yuan explains that Bai was only led astray by their demonic methods. Yuan commands his spirit stream disciples to escort Bai back to the mountain, so he can handle the demonic methods of the bloodstream sector. The fight between Patriarchs continues as we see that the other bloodmasters unleash their attack. Bai sees the nearby battle taking place and does his best to stop them from fighting more. They seemingly aren't able to hear him, so he gets more aggressive with his demand. Just then, Bai is surprised to see that Song is there and must stop his attack. Song explains how naive Bai is for trying to stop the war with just his foundation establishment level strength, and states that it's useless for him to say anything else. The Patriarchs say pretty much the same thing as they both call him to their side, and explains that he will not be able to control this war. Bai finally begins to realize that they are right, and he is just a bloodmaster. He can only watch as the war rages on, and he determines that he is not strong enough to stop the war at all. Now that things have gotten this far, Bai determines that he has no other choice, and will have to disappoint the Bloodstream Sector. He unleashes a burst of energy and instructs the Bloodstream Sector to heed his command. 
Just then, the dead puppets and demons stop attacking as Bloodstream Sector disciples are shocked to see that their blood key is being taken away. Every Bloodstream member begins to fall to their knees as they explain that their cultivation has been suppressed by half. The Bloodstream Sector patriarchs are in complete disbelief as they realize that even they are being suppressed by him. Bai is now more furious than he has ever been, and states that if the Bloodstream Sector is determined to destroy the Spirit Stream Sector, then they must do so over his dead body. Song can't understand how he is able to suppress every person from every peak of the Blood Sector, and the Patriarch reveals that this could only mean Yi Zhang has the Blood Demon inheritance. Not a single person can believe that it's true, and Jun realizes that this person before her actually managed to become the living second Blood Ancestor. Bai is confident that the war can end now that he has suppressed the Bloodstream Sector, and offers to speak on behalf of the Spirit Stream Sector. However, he is stunned to see that the Spirit Stream side is the one to continue the attack, as Tianyu sees this as a perfect opportunity since the Bloodstream has been weakened. The Spirit Stream Sector as a whole then joins in to continue the assault on the Bloodstream Sector, as Song begins to wonder if Yi Zhang really is on their side now. Bai attempts to calm the Spirit Stream Sector down now as they are the aggressor. They don't listen to him and even go as far as to release a devastating attack from a turret. Bai heads to stop the attack and uses the undying heavenly demon body to do so. This shocks everyone as it is an amazing combination of both bloodstream and spirit stream techniques, but it consumes massive amounts of spiritual energy. Song can't understand why Bai is going this far as everyone expresses concern for his well-being. Jun commands everyone to never submit as Bai begins to realize that he was too naive and overestimated his own strength. He realizes that he must not hold back and decides to show everyone his true mastery of power. He unleashes a burst of energy that catches the attention of the Black Dragon and we see that Tidon even transforms to a more powerful Beast King. He exclaims to everyone that he is the honored disciple of the Spirit Stream and also the owner of a Beast King. He understands that deep down the two sectors don't really want to fight, but they both want the middle peak and have to fight a battle of survival. Furthermore, the results of the war don't matter since it will undoubtedly be a miserable victory for whoever is the winner. Whoever is victorious will surely be depleted and will eventually have to fight against the profound stream sector. Even if they are victorious against them, then they will have to start a war against the midstream Sky River Court. If they somehow manage to win that war, then they will surely be the weakest middle stream sector and will eventually be swallowed and destroyed. Bai is aware that many of the disciples are still willing to fight, but he points out that dying as a sacrifice for this battle between sectors is meaningless. He doesn't want to see his family and friends die for nothing, and is determined to stop everyone even if it means that they will resent and hate him. Bai points out that they have a common goal as downstream sectors attempting to establish themselves in the unfamiliar middle stream. They can only trust in each other, so Bai recommends that they merge the two sectors together. This way, they can form a stronger sector together and even become the strongest sector to ever exist. After a short moment, however, Patriarch Song reveals himself and explains that all his words are nonsense. He states that Bai is only deluding everyone with his lies and unleashes an attack meant to end Bai's life. Thanks for watching part 25, 6,000 likes, and I'll know you want a part 26. Also, all other parts are in a pinned comment below.